I love it. It got me to music. Probably my, my music was around my house as a kid, like a lot of musicians, I guess. So um, my mom was always blasting it and singing at the top of the lungs. And I think I think that's my earliest memory of music being like seeing her enjoyment and, and like passion release. And I thought in my head, I was like, I like that release. And I like what music does to people. So that was probably the earliest memory of that. So she tried to come home from my school to you know, listen to the headphones, sing the top of her lungs. And I wouldn't tell her I was there, I just walked. And I just was enamored by the whole idea. And what prompted you to kind of make it your career? Uh, well, it was a long path because at first I, I, I liked performing. So I used to like, like the Britney Spears behind the music, so I would just like put on shows for like my family. You know? I thought I guess I wanted to be some sort of performer or an actor or something like that. And then, uh, and then Kenny G, I played the saxophone, and Kenny G was like really popular. And I was a little kid. I think I wanted to be him, which is crazy to think about. Uh, and then Pearl Jam came out, and it kind of saved my life and everybody else is around me <laughs> from being the next Kenny G. And, and I found rock and roll music. Uh, for like my generation and, and, and I wanted to do that. And you kind of did a little bit of the TV show discovery route. So what, I mean, how does something like that launch you? Because people, what people don't realize is people are, when you go out for a show like that, you're already involved in music and trying to work your way up. I mean, sometimes. I know people that literally were like, you know, picking up poop or bartenders or something and, and then like become superstars overnight because of those shows. Um, yeah, I mean, my path, I was already doing it. I was in a rock band from 14 years old, you know, on. So the TV thing for me was really just like another shot at just trying to get out there in a bigger way. Just just like putting a website up or getting your song on the radio, I thought, man, well, this is maybe another way to get out in front of a lot of people, which it was. Um, it comes with a cost many levels. It comes to the price, you know, when you dance with the devil and like you, you play the TV game. Um, I, I feel like lucky I didn't get so involved with something so giant that I couldn't get my soul back. But, you know, from that point, before that in New York, I was like an indie artist, you know, just doing my thing and like a lot of buzz. And, and when you make that jump, all of a sudden you're, you're, you're different, you're, you're mainstream. So I fight with that sometimes because my roots are more of a rock base, more of an indie base. Um, doing a show like that, the benefits are you get in front of millions of people worldwide. Um, so, so it was an interesting time. It was years ago, so like at this point, it's really just kind of like a blip and a memory. Uh, but here we are. So it's like a journey, you know. And I, I feel like many paths can take you to the same holy land, you know. But. Um, that, that is just a piece of it now, you know? Where, where five years ago, it was in like everything, and it was all we were talking about. But now, yeah, it's like a little piece of it, you know? Okay, so what have you kind of been up to, like, at the end of last year and into this year, and what do you expect to see throughout the rest of this year? Well, this year's been like a, like a year of, like, self-discovery again. Like, I feel like the 14-year-old in me is alive and well now. Where, where you know, you, you get into such a big, you get into such a big, uh, like machine with the record labels and the and TV and videos and radio and everything. It's like everything's working. All of a sudden, now your your living is based on that. So like you're making money also from doing what you love and art and all this stuff. And like the wires start getting crossed. And like that's when the that compromises get made. And I saw myself like dancing on that line, and I, and I, and I thought, well, I got to pull back and say like fuck all that and, and focus on what makes me happy. Really, as an artist. I chose that first, you know, I didn't choose, I didn't choose all the things that come with it, I, I didn't even know what that was when I decided to pick up a guitar, you know, so it was, for me, it's, this year has been about getting back to that and hoping that all the other things are taken care of, hopefully the world takes care of you in those ways, but for me it was, go back to what I love, that stream of consciousness, music, and like writing for you, and, and stop worrying about so much about everything else, so like, just in the last few months, I mean, I released an EP online for free, the way I used to do it, you know, just put it out there on Twitter, the click of a button to celebrate like the communication at its finest, you know, like your screen music. Uh, the, uh, I, I made a video 
like on my own. I didn't got no approvals from any corporate fuckers in suits or anything. I just said, let's make a video, make a video. And that's out there. It's called Stay Wild. It's creating some buzz and getting exposure now. It's just fun. And from all that, it's like doing it on yourself and, and, and not counting on anybody else, it started. Uh, and even though I have those people and they exist in my life, but, but taking that, taking that step of just doing it to do it, waking up and say, I want to make something today. I want to create something. I want to like express myself. Now all of a sudden, without even trying, like people starting to play it on the radio, and MTV Buzzworthy covered the video last week. You know, stuff like that is happening naturally, and I feel way better about that. So this year, I think will be uh, continuing that path. You know, and just just creating, like waking up and not not making ten phone calls to figure out how to make the music, just waking up and making the music. And um, it's it's a better place to be. I think in whatever career you do, it's like find the part of it you love, focus on that, and, 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 and I guess have faith that the rest of the things will come, that you need, whatever it is, you know, a car, a, 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 a umbrella, I don't know, <laughs> what do people need, people don't need anything, you need love. Yeah. So, um, what, I mean, when you write a song, like, do you have, do you go the melody first, the lyric second, or lyrics first, melody first, or do you kind of There's like the three, like, there's like three ways, there's like, sides to it, which is, um, you know, yeah, you have a melody, and that sounds like hooky to you, and, and it sounds, it sounds right, and then, then you put, you find those words, and you piece them together like a puzzle. But that, that never strikes with, with me. It's always a little like just trying to force something in, like force the wrong shape into the other shape, like the kids play those yeah. games, you know. I was never good at that. So um, the other, the other way, which I'm doing recently, is like just walking around and, and having my radar up and taking. You know, noticing like noticing your glasses aren't completely dark, 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 so like I can see your eyes, I can see a shade, I can see you know, it's like when you're when you're when you're looking at water and you can see some fish, like but you can't see the detail, like like noticing things like that and trying to put it into imagery and then trying to let you not buy a car and then right and um this is great um, yeah, you're all good um and and and. And that to me is really fun because like then you have an idea, so you actually have to say something. So many times now you listen to a song, and, and I, I hope, hope, I hope, I hope my songs don't do this to other people. But you know, sometimes you listen like really, like does the world need that idea out there right now? But I think when you find the meaning of it first, and, and you have something to say, it comes out more honest, you know. Um, and, and, and saying something is why we, we make music. So. Um, that's like what I've been doing lately. And my favorite way of writing is just sitting down at the piano and letting it just kind of stream of consciousness, just like open yourself up and do whatever your your body tells you to, your mind tells you to. And that to me is the best. A little bit out of laziness, because then you like just hit record and then you listen back and you're like, oh, there's the song. And it's harder when it's like homework, when you put the pieces together. I, I don't like that as much. Um, but yeah, I guess there's all different ways to write a song. And then you're kind of just starting to play a bunch more shows again. So what can people expect to see when they come to see the live? Uh, yeah, every time I want to go into the studio to like make this record, because I have my new song Stay A While, that's finished, and I keep going to make the record, and, I, and people keep calling me up and go on tour, which is awesome, because my, 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 like, my priority is always touring, and, and seeing the fans, and making new ones, and all that stuff, uh, and taking the world, because like, that's inspiration for writing as well. And, this, this time, you know, about a year ago, I was going to make the record and then I went on tour with Bon Jovi, which was unreal, you know, it's crazy, you know. So, of course, you go on tour and then I came home, oh, I was going to make the record and then uh, my friend Johnny Resnick called me, who good else? And then, all right, I'm going on tour with them. And then I get home and then this guy, Andy Grammer, who's got a big song on radio now, calls and we go out with him and <laughs> we spent, uh, you know, two months on the bus with him. And then then uh, I'm home and, and this, this great band from South Africa called, you know, to go on tour. And, for me, it was fun to get back on the road with a real rock band again, go back to my roots a little bit. Um, so I'm doing that, but I'm committed to stay home this summer and, and you know, quickly make, make make the next album and uh, put that out there and then get back on the road. Yeah, it's, all, it's, all, it's all it is, that cycle. Yeah. But I like the cycles happening quicker, you know? Yeah. So what's your live show like? Uh, I have a few different, like, 
I've always, I've always just like jumped around. Like the passion is, is the constant. Like I, 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 I grew up loving the Doors and, and Pearl Jam and like stuff like that, where it's just passion based. And like the songs come and they're great songs, but they mean something. But, but it's really about that moment, like that Springsteen thing, where you can go see him play. And it doesn't matter if he's born in the USA or Philadelphia or Dance in the Dark. It's like it's all about seeing the energy come off that stage, and that's why people go back for. 50 years, you know, and watch them. And my, my goal is to do that. So tonight, we might play songs that people, even the fans never even heard. Like, we're trying stuff out. It's all about being here in the moment. Not saying, oh, I want to hear that song that you played on the radio, you know? It's more about, I want to see them play. And there's a few different ways. Like, I have my rock band, you know, the, the full, like, arena rock band that we go out with, and it's a great show. And they're my best friends. And then there's, tonight, uh, my keyboard player, Down Alphabet, and I, we get on stage. She runs some tracks and like like loopy stuff and triggering live samples. More of like a modern take on the music that I have. And I'm doing the acoustic thing. So it's like it's this real great, you know, balance. And that's what we're doing tonight. And then I'll show up at the piano bar at four in the morning in New York City and just sit and play. So it's like whatever I whatever I want that day. Um, and uh, it keeps it fresh for me too, because there's nothing worse than like I don't, I'm not a Broadway actor. I don't know if I can do that every night, the same thing. I'd be the guy like fucking up the lines on purpose, you know? <laughs> so, this tour, keeping it simple, and, and Down and I are having a good time, feeding off each other. It's kind of like a modern Damien Rice rock and roll set, you know? Where it's just a duo, but it's also modern. modern. And we still have that, I'll still be dripping sweat by the end of the show. So it's not like, you know, this was like sitting in a stool kind of set. I hate that. When I see guys sitting in stools, I'm like, kick the stool out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm not. Uh, and then I know when you released the video for Breathe a while ago, like there was a whole job thing. And yeah. Kind of found a job because of that video. Yeah. But what, like, Nonprofit work are you involved with right now, or like things like organizations? I'm big into um, that. That was a big deal for me because in the beginning, like I was saying, like you do these things and you think you're supposed to do something. Oh, I just make a video where like you look good and you know this way you get fans and like oh you know you want me to wear that shirt? Okay, and, like you know you, you can lose yourself quick and and I, and I never was one for that. I just I think I'm lucky. I think in the way that I grew up liking bands. Shit about that the material was like second, and the music is always first for me. So I'm not like that pop guy that, you know, that the show is first and the music's like, I'm a music first guy. So um, uh, the video for me was really cool because it reminded me that it's not about image, it's not about, it's like, man, I can take this medium and make something positive in the world. You know, I have a reason for it because, like, why do we need another, like, fish eye lens, you know, thing? Like, I don't, I don't know, we've seen it already. So unless you're going to move. The art forward to make something beautiful. Sometimes I want to make something important. That's what Breathe was about. And my new state, my new video, Stay While, is on the beautiful side. It was like it's more just about creating great imagery and, 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 and feelings, like the way you when you go to a photography exhibit. Like I wanted that feeling. Like that video, I'm so proud of. The director did such a good job. And it's his first directing uh, gig because he's a photographer. And if you pause my video, Stay While, at any moment in the whole song, it looks like a photograph, beautiful photograph. You know? That's what I, that was what I was going for that. So Breathe did inspire me to give back and do good. And my mom, uh, I grew up in an activist home, you know? So she always taught me that having a voice is more than just singing. Having a voice is more than speaking. And before I even knew how to sing, I remember being part of the community, trying to save the world with my mom. So uh, now um, I, I'm big into education. I think like teachers are very um, underappreciated undervalued in this country, and it's, it's a really twisted balance, a sick thing in my opinion. Um, and the environment is always and will always be on the front lines of my thoughts, because uh, without the world, we have nothing, you know? Yeah. This is a great place. But here we are, my little piece is like, here we are in a, in a world where we're going to outer space to find like a, just an ounce of like a, a signal of water that existed maybe millions of years ago. Like, was there potentially like... And here we are, here with the beautiful, like, most perfect world that... It's like really nice outside. Uh, yeah, look at the sky, look at the sky, you know, it's like... No, really, look, look, look at this face. The sky. Here we are with the most perfect, like, unreal, like, one in a trillion chance that this happens, if not more. 
and we sit here polluting it, destroying it. It's, it's, the, it's the most, it's the most like, baffling thing in my mind. I, don't, I can't understand. I think aliens are looking at us from afar like, why are they doing that? They sleep there, right? You know, it's like when you see a dog tear apart his bed and like take a crap on it. And you're like, that's kind of stupid, dude. That's why you're a dog. And like, we're that. We are doing that. We're just destroying. We're crapping on our bed. Okay. Um, yeah. Peace. <laughs> and then lastly, like... Lastly? Yeah. Through social networks. For now. It's like, I'm out of here. This guy's freaking... Yeah. <laughs> um, so the last question was the shape eyes. Okay. Then probably have the Beautiful eyes. Mine are prescription. So, with your social media stuff, how do you, like, connect with your fans and reach out to them? Man, that's it. That's what I do. So I'm getting dizzy. I'm gonna throw up. Okay, hold on. Um, what I do is just that. I I do social media. I reach out. You know, we're traveling a lot, so I'm always twittering. And it's kind of like a full time job, you know. Um, but it's also a great way to connect and have this instant feedback that you never used to have. Like I can I can really put something out there and see what people think instantly. So I can move quicker where I'm going with my art. You can't let them in so much because you want to do what you do. Yeah. But it's really an incredible thing. There's no middle, there's no filter, there's no middle ground where like you used to need to have like a company in between you and your fans. And now it's like like like, yeah, we'll call you. Like we need you, like here's the fans and here's me, and like we're all good. Nobody knows the people I want to reach better than me. And and they know me better than me. So it's like, why have this middle thing? And then social media for me is, is great. It's destroyed that middle man, that filter that can make you seem less genuine. And the thing that can make you seem farther from, from your, your bad people. So, so I love it. And yeah, Facebook, Twitter, whatever's next, whatever you're doing, a trillion dollars. So what, and what's the best way for someone to grab your attention? It is probably coming to a concert and taking off all your clothes and having a tattoo of my face on their on their stomach. <laughs> That's probably the best way to get my attention. If you're not going to do that, and I kid, so please, kids, don't do that. I don't want to see that. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, but the stomach part. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, my website. It's very interactive. Uh, and coming to the shows. I mean, uh, I, every night I'll, I'll be outside after the show and I'll be speaking to everybody shaking hands and hugging and, you know, communicating. That's why I'm out here. That's why I'm far from home. That's why I'm away from my family. And it's to do this. It's to, you know, do this right here. This is real life thing. This thing, yeah. right? Not this. It's this. That's, and that's the best way to see me and reach me. Um, but the best way, too, is just to listen. Because I know when you're listening. I feel, I feel it. I feel when people listen to my music. I do. So, so keep listening. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Thank you.